tribal Māori politics could be back on the national agenda if a wairarapa iwi has its way. Papawai, just north of Carterton, was home to the first ever Māori parliament. And now there are calls to revive the Kotahitanga movement. Jodi Ihaka has more details. The sound of Tui herald a brand new season, just as plans emerge to refresh and grow a century-old Māori political platform. The point of our hui is to celebrate our rich past here at Papawai and the role that we played in the Kotahitanga movement. This year marks 115 years since we hosted our first session of the movement. Dusty framed photographs of local rangatira line the walls of this whare that survived a fire and an earthquake. Malcolm Mulholland says the timing is right for Māori to reboot political participation. Just behind me is my tipuna, Hwani Rangitaki Iwaho. Hwani was the chief of Papawai, um, who inherited much of the land. Um, and it was through him and his uncle, Pura Kapo, that they invited Davarangatira to be a part of Papawai. It's taken more than a year to develop a strategy that sees more than 500 Māori from different iwi gather here this weekend. Our kaumātua have been talking about it for a long time. And over the years, since 1897, we've been actually regarded as the home of Māori Parliament. That is largely due to the fact that where Hikurangi now stands, um, that was the site of Aotea Te Waipanamu which was a big two-storey purpose-built building to house Māori Parliament. So, yeah, there's been a few things in the mix, but we felt now's the time, the time is right, and let's celebrate our past. How different was Māori Parliament to Pākehā Parliament at the time? It actually operated along similar lines. So you had a lower house and you had an upper house, and we had elections and people were voted in, and there were motions that were put. Um, there was a speaker, there were ministers, so it was actually replicated on the Pākehā system of governance. I think it worked because there's a real willingness of our people to come together. Um, we were very much under the hammer with regards to the alienation of land and also the loss of autonomy and our guarantees not being met under Te Tiriti Waitangi. So I think there were a combination of factors. People came together and thought that uh, it was a worthwhile kaupapa. Hui were held each year and the voting age for men and women was just 15 years old. The movement was encompassing of all people regardless of age, sex, creed, religion, what have you. The kaupapa was kutahitanga, was unity, was coming together. And not only did we allow rangatahi uh, to vote, there was also a move to have women vote, which was um, a bit unique for its time. And they, I, my understanding is that they preceded the suffragette movement. Um, the Pākehā women's movement uh, in order to have the vote in Parliament. When you talk about what is the best way forward, what do you see as some of the issues that you might be looking at? Well, I think if the hui in Narawahi is anything to go by, um, kotahitanga is a challenge to our people. Um, but I think given the right set of circumstances and the right kaupapa, there's no reason why it can't occur. Tepuna managed to do it over 100 years ago. There's no reason why today in 2012 it can't happen again. The Māori Parliament seemed incredibly progressive politically for its time. Why did it fail? It ultimately failed because there was a conservative faction and a radical faction and uh, really there was a piece of legislation, the Māori Council Act, that delegated authority to Māori councils throughout the country and they were seen as uh, bodies that were, in, that were able to carry out the duties of Māori Parliament. Papawai visitors will also enjoy an exhibition of original Lindau paintings aimed at inspiring a new generation of Māori leadership. It means a hell of a lot actually. In so much as that's about the past, it's also about my future. Um, I've always felt that way and it probably comes as no surprise that my tipuna have been involved in politics as he was, that I should have some involvement in politics today. It's about having better educational outcomes, better health, uh, more autonomy, um, honouring the treaty, but over and above everything else it's about improving where our people are positioned.